Hey, you, it's Truly Kendra here. We're so live all over the world. www.bronxnet.org. And today we have some, this is one of my, this is like, you no, know, the celebrities, celebrities are not here. You, you know, you're used to like, we had Peter Guns the other day. We had the Fields Four on location. We had Coach TD. You've been seeing a lot of celebrities, uh, either we out on location or they're coming to us. You know, we do have a celebrity here today, but what I'm trying to say is today is one of the most amazing shows ever because we are able to break down into three segments. I hope you guys have a pen. You're going to take information and this information because these are community based events happening today and I want you to get it all. And we do have a celebrity in the building and um, <laughs> I had to do this. So don't forget we're live all over the world, www.bronxnet.org. Tell a friend to tell another friend, and uh, you just click on, simply click on channel 68, and uh, 7.30 to 8.30 every Thursday night. Now, uh, I want to do this, everybody. Lisa Renee Evans Graham is in our building today. She's a writer, director, and producer of eight, I said eight, eight, eight plays, mm -hmm. and uh, author of two books, and uh, it's just a blessing to have her in my building. Thank Bruce. you. Bruce. But not broken. broken. That's Hello. Right. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. She's in the building. Get your, we're going to be giving away tickets today. So you want to get your pen and paper out. But uh, just before uh, we get to have a real, we're going to do girl talk, okay? Okay. All right. So we, just before we do our girl talk, I want you guys to know that uh, today we have community options on our second set, okay? And we're going to, you know, we have folks in our community that have... Um, other capacities, right? And they need jobs. They need somewhere to live. We got we to gotta help people out. So this is one of my favorite types of shows. We're going to give you tickets today. We're going to help you find jobs for people with disabilities. And, you know, we're also, um, whatever that may be, brain traumatic injuries, if it's uh, autism, we want to support everybody in our community. Mm -hmm. we, leave no, we leave no man out today, no child. And then... We got, bit, you know I love this show, Meet My Bishop and Pastor. So we'll have my Bishop, Timothy Burkett, Doctor, yes, Bishop Doctor, Timothy Burkett calling in today. Mm -hmm. And we'll also have, yes, Pastor Larry. So lock your dolls, everybody. And uh, it's going to be so amazing today. We're so not, we're just getting started. Okay. So girl, talk to me. How you doing? <laughs> I'm blessed. <laughs> it's been a while. So we've had the cast up, mm -hmm. and I just enjoyed having the entire cast of, we, we missed one person, yes. uh, but we had, they, we did it, girl. We did. We had a great time being here with you, spending that time with you. So thank you so much. I love you. Blessings. You know, I'm going to do my right Bronx, strong, Bronx <laughs> strong for this one. But I want to do this. So now we're back at it again. Mm -hmm. Yes, Bruce. we are. But not broken. Yes. That's it. And tell the folks where you guys are going to be. Uh, we're going to be at the Gerald W. Lynch Theater, um, which is connected with John Jay College. And that's on 524 on West 59th Street between 10th and 11th Avenues yes. in Midtown. So, yes. So, you know, I'm, I all, I'm coming out. You know I'll be out well, there, right? thank you for the support. And, and it's going down <laughs> on October the 12th. Yes, it is. Okay, so here we go right here. You, can, you guys can take a look at home. Now, y'all better pay attention because y'all going to have to try to win some tickets. We got some tickets I'm giving away. Mm -hmm. She's giving away. Yes. You know I get people to do some crazy things <laughs> on this show. So she's going to be giving away a bunch of tickets uh, today. And you might just have to answer a few questions. Tell them where it's going to be one more time. At the Jump, 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 sorry, Jevil W. Lynch Theater, which is 524 West on 59th Street. That's between 10th and 11th Avenues in Midtown Manhattan. Right, and it's inside of? 
Um, it's inside the theater, which is, um, I just gave you the address, and that's part connected with John Jay College. Yes, John Jay College, so mm -hmm. you don't get, like, deterred or you... you oh, know. right, they have right. the so theater they have separate. Little, yes. Yes. So, all right, so you can go through in there, and you can come right through, and we'll be in the building. We'll, we'll be catching you guys. We'll take be taking photos after the show. We always do that with the cast, and we get to meet them. I took my interns the last time. Yes, And you I did. just want to, can I clap for you? Can we oh, clap thank in studio? you so much. Thank can we you. Give you a clap? I appreciate it. Thank and, you. And I'm clapping because you are you are you are phenomenal. You are a writer, director, producer, and you have eight plays that you have written. Yes. Tell I me do. the names. Oh my goodness. Okay, Bruised When I Bro Broken, Double for Your Trouble, I Don't Look Like What I've Been Through, Behind Closed Doors, Ready or Not, Here I Come. Oh my God, I got to remember the rest of okay. it. It's a lot. Hey, you know, you got a lot of bodies of work. <laughs> and I'm putting a lot on you. You and are. I, I'm putting so much on her right now. But I just, you have two books out. You're the author of two books. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then I'll ask you about Bruised But Not Broken, how this, okay. the passion for this play came about for you. Because I'm sure, you know, every play, something comes to you like, okay, I'm, I'm going to write about this. This right. is what we're going to do this time. Okay. So now, uh, talk to me a little bit about the two books. You're the author of. Okay, so I'm the author of Bruised But Not Broken and While You Wait, What to Do While You're Waiting on the Promises of God. Okay, and I, and I heard um, some things are available on Amazon. They are on Amazon. You could just type in the name titles of the book or Lisa Evans, and it'll, the books will come up on Amazon as well. And, and I would suggest you um, look up Lisa Evans because her body of work is just too much just for this this one segment that we have today. So Thank we'll you. have her back and we'll have the entire cast and crew back. Yes. And it's going to be amazing. I'm, I'm trying to get them to, I'm, I'm trying to get Lisa <laughs> to wrap her head around this idea that I'm having about having them reenact a scene that they put together. It doesn't have to be from blues, but not broken, but just, just to show their talent. We already got their voices, their voices. Two of your cast members can really sing. Okay. I, I think all five of them all can, five. but... But okay. I mean, you had two really, like, belted out on the show. Oh, they, no, they did yeah, you had two, on the show. You had yes, two they cast did. of your cast members belted out on my last show. So I, I would really love to hear the five of them. Okay. So even if it's something together that, you know, they do, that they come up. But I just want to say I'm so proud of them. And we had interns that are in awe about oh, them. Oh, they're young, that, lovely ladies. Susan and Sarah. Yes. They came up and they spent some time. And their mom is Dr. Nancy. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Okay. So uh, Dr. Nancy and I talk about you all a lot and the play and all the support we want to give you all. So um, just pay attention, everybody. You better have your pen and paper because we will be uh, giving away some tickets in a few minutes. But we're going to talk a little bit about um, Bruised But Not Broken. How, how did this come about for you? How did you... How did, how did that stick to you more than anything out of all the, all the eight plays and the book, Bruised But Not Broken. Okay, well actually the book and the play, while they have the same title, totally different um, um, items in that. So the play is about the Thomas sisters, um, four sisters who go on vacation um, to the beautiful island of Jamaica. Woo -hoo! Look at yes. these girls, look, there they go. There they go. <laughs> there they go, honey, right there on the screen. So they go to Jamaica thinking they're gonna have this that's them. And they think they're going to do what? They go to Jamaica because they having some uh, well-deserved sister time outside of the country. And they meet, they go and they rent a house and they meet this housekeeper called Mabel. I love Mabel. Yes. So Mabel pretty much turns their world upside down because she has the insight and discernment of spirit that God gave her. And she's able to look into them and see the stuff that they're hiding. And if she gets on the phone, what's her friend name that she be calling? Oh. Okay, you have to come to see this friend. You have to come uh, to the that's play the only, to see. That's the only, okay, all right, I'm not, okay, see, I keep getting in trouble. She I'm not even going to tell you about the friend. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm I, you know what, I'm, I can't say nothing else. <laughs> I'm going to let you talk. What you want to say? Because you say something, because I'm about to get in trouble right now. I'm about to tell y'all something about the play. You know, y'all really have to go out and see this play. This play is super amazing. And you know what's funny? Because Susan and Sarah, they're young. They're children. And they really got the concept. Tell me, like, the ca each character. So what, the, what the, their role, their character, character displayed. What did you go after for certain characters in this play to show uh, your community okay so first i prayed about it because to be totally honest totally transparent 
I can't write a thing unless God inspired me and give, it, give me um, the wisdom knowledge and know how to do it. So first what I did was I prayed and asked God, what do you want me to say to your people? And so um, he led me to bruise but not broken because he wanted to deal with the issues that women have. Uh, we wanted to talk about just not only the issues but the secrecy and the embarrassment that happens. Sometimes we go through things and you don't want people to know. But more importantly, he wanted to hit on um, that he had the ability to heal. He has the ability to heal. There is nothing too hard for him. There's nothing that God cannot do. There's no problem that he cannot solve. There's no way out um, that he cannot make. And that healing comes when you um, let go and let God be God. When you go and you say, you know, I'm not hiding no more. I'm not going to be embarrassed about the fact that I'm suffering with this um, issue. I'm going through this trial or tribulation. I'm just going to give it to God and let him heal it. And that's what the play is really about. You have fun. It's a, there's a bunch of comedy in this play. Um, it's a lot of real life issues that people are going through. But most importantly, it's the the message that God is able and that you're not by yourself. No matter what you go through in this life, somebody else is going through the same thing. You I might feel it. like you're by yourself, but you are never alone. You're not by yourself. Um, there's some sisters. It's about sisterhood as yes. well. Like your sister got your back. You're going to be okay. You tell her. You might think, oh, my God, she doesn't know what I'm going through. She'll never understand. But you'd be surprised. God prepares people um, for you. So you go and say, I have this issue, and I can have an issue, Kendra. And I'd be like, I'm going through this all by myself. Because the trick of the enemy is to make you think you're in it by yourself. Amen. Nobody understands. Nobody cares. God's just not thinking about you. And that's the trick of the enemy. So I can have something, and I'd be like, oh, my God, I really want to share it with Kendra. But I don't think she's going to get it. But God has already prepared you for what I'm about to say. So when I say it to you, you feel me, you understand me. And then I'm like, it feels better because now I'm able to connect with somebody else who's human, just like me, and they understand it. And God is going to word your mouth and give you the stuff to say to encourage me. And then I can start my healing process. So that's what Booze When I Broken is about. Amen. Amen. And you, you did it. I'm going back again. So, oh, but thank so you. it's really good if I'm going thank back you. again. So I'm going back again. And hopefully my interns, I know... They, w they would love to come, so I would love to bring them. Yeah. And um, I want to do this. So, Bruce, but not broken, everybody. Uh, tell the folks how they can uh, follow you on your social media platforms and uh, where they can get um, some group rates and some... You also do fundraisers, right? Yes, we do. So we have special group rates. We do fundraisers. Um, to reach out, you can call us on our cell, the number um, for the business, and it's 646 797 7227. You can email us at Baby E N T at gmail.com. And our social media platforms is under the name of our, our company, which is Rose Baby Enterprises. So it's Rose Baby E N T. And that's for Instagram and Facebook as well. Give a round of applause. And thank TV. you. Thank you. Well, as we wrap it up right now, I just want to say thank you so much for coming out. And this is going down October the 12th. Please let them know one more time where you're going to be on October the 12th so we can be there. John Jay College, they have a theater called the Jebel W. Lynch Theater, which is 524 West 59th Street between 10th and 11th Avenues. The show starts at 5, doors open at 430, and the production lasts about 2 hours and 15 minutes. Anything you want to say to your cast? Oh, guys, I love y'all. Uh, we are a team. This is not like Lisa's production. We are a team. I cannot do any of this without you all. Y'all mean so much to me. And my prayer, that God, my prayer for you is that God will do exceedingly, abundantly above all that you could ask or think just because you shared your gifts and your talents with me. And that's um, behind the stage as well as on the stage. You have to so see them. You. They're praying. And, 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 you know, it doesn't seem like that this is just like a gospel. It's not a gospel play. It doesn't look like it. And that's why, you know, the children, the interns, when they came, they were able to connect. They saw real life issues. Yes. And, you, and I think everybody sitting there, we all could connect with one of those issues. So that's the blessing. And you feel really blessed when you leave there. So um, one more time. Closing thank out. Thank I want to say thank you. I love you. I Lisa love Evans, you. everybody. Lisa Evans Graham is in our building. Writer, director, producer. And uh, I tell you what, everybody, you want to be out there for booze but not broken. And that's going down on October the 12th. And uh, I'm going to give away some free tickets. What do they have to do? 
Um, how you can decide. I can what decide. You want to, yes, you can decide. You got to tell me the address. I'm gonna um, my email is crossovershowcase at gmail.com. If you email me right now, give me the address of where this play is gonna be. Tell me the name of this play, and you got yourself some tickets. So lock your dolls. Okay. I hope you're a winner. Yay! <laughs> Look forward to seeing you all. All right, we'll see you at the play, everybody. You will have the time of your life. There will be a transformation, and you will love it, I promise you. You will love it so much that you will come back. Yes. Um, most of the people that come to our plays, we have had people to come see Bruce When I Broken four times. Six. Yes. Six, Six times. Okay, that's a lot of time to see the same play. <laughs> I bought some people. You have some fans because mm. I bought um, some interns out. So you have some fans, and they're in the uh, audience. And um, can we clap for the uh, the little interns that we have? Here? <laughs> okay, wait, guys. You got you got the microphone. Wait, wait for your microphone. They have it. Okay. All right, they're ready. Yes, you can come. Hi. <laughs> Oh, oh, thank you so oh, much. Thank you, baby. Thank you. We gotta give you a hug. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. 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 You can block yeah, me. Go ahead. Go. Come over here. So yeah. this is all right. So come right here, Susan. Come on this side. Okay. All right. Okay. Can I borrow somebody's yes, of mic? Yes. Okay. Yes. So we can hear. Okay. All right. And we'll give it right back to them. Okay. So they want to tell you all something. You gave them roses, right? Do you want to say something to the cast and the director of yeah. Bruised but Not Broken? Okay. Go over there. Susan, oh. that's Susan, everybody. Hi, yes. Susan. Hi, Susan. <laughs> so what do you so, want to tell them, Susan? I just want to say that it was one of the best shows I've ever seen in my life. It's like I, I didn't feel like I was sitting in the audience. I felt like I was just sitting there and watching you guys actually, like, experiencing that in real life. It wasn't like acting it, it didn't feel like acting you guys are so good oh thank, thank you thank you, so thank you. Yeah. that is thank so, so sweet she she, she almost didn't want to come and okay. then she was so happy to come oh god and she was so happy yes. that she came oh out and she had to be here today so come over here susan oh, oh that god. is so nice okay can thank we clap for her yes, yes. 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 thank you thank you she thank graduated you. too oh, congratulations yes. susan thank you. so i'm gonna give susan my rose that's what you that's for me, she won't take, she won't go. Oh. All right, Sarah, come here. Tell me something, turn around, turn around. Okay, tell them what you thought about the play. I really think your acting was amazing. Oh. And the expressions. Oh, thank oh. you. And how sweet. It felt me very nice to have a sister. Yes. Oh, the time that's and absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So it felt really, you guys are sisters, so now you're gonna treat each other even nicer, right? <laughs> right? Okay. How old are you, Sarah? I'm eight years old. And uh, how old are you, Susan? Almost 11. Almost 11. She said almost 11. Almost 11. 10 and three quarters. Ten and three quarters. Well, if uh, I can really quickly, Susan and Sarah, we will be your sisters from afar. Yes. Well, okay? So Tom is sister. Yes. <laughs> what do you guys think about that? I think that's great. So no, I, think that's I think that's great. Are we going to be at the next that. play? Yes. Okay, let's yes. pop out the course. Of course. Hey, of course. Hey, hey, your friend. Friend. She said, sell off. Yeah. 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 Sell off then. <laughs> Everyone to come. <laughs> All right, you guys hold, give them their mics back. And thank you, girl. Say thank you for thank sharing you. with me. Thank you. And we, we love you. our outfit. Bye, guys. Thank you. Yes. Yes. And you guys walked off on the correct camera. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. yes they did it. So oh this is their God. first time interning with me today. and. Uh, 
They really wanted to come out. I, I, oh, I believe beautiful. that we have to uplift our community. Yes. And how we do that is that your pl that play was so amazing to these girls. She's eight. She said eight, right? Yes. yes. Did you hear her say eight? Yes. So you appeal to all ages, eight and ten and a quarter or three quarters, <laughs> whatever you want to say about the ten. <laughs> and I think that's, like, to me, that's what makes it so much better because... Honestly, you would think adults would just come to a play. Like to see children really receive our message and yes. what we've done and really have a response like that. Like to me, that's all I need. Yes. That That's anything, I can't ask for anything more, I'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On that, um, when we were in rehearsal, our stage manager, Naomi, her son, he yes. was, he, it didn't seem like he was paying any attention no. to it at all. <laughs> But we, uh, as um, um, we were moving along. You got your mic up on that. Oh, <laughs> as we were moving along, he, I could just see him focusing on us. Yes. And going like this. And his mother asked him, his mother asked him, she said, what do you think? He said, mommy, this place going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> to see his focus. Yes. To see how it made him feel, mm -hmm. it's definitely... It's definitely heart, heart yeah, heartwarming. Yeah, heartwarming. Yeah. Yeah. Now, my son is autistic, and I took him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, their attention span for things get short. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, every every time you turn around, you whipped out a song. Or you popped out. <laughs> yeah. Mabel popped out <laughs> and said, what? Or something. And it just, like, it, it, it spurt, he was laughing. Oh, you know, the, when everybody else was laughing and clapping, he was laughing and clapping. Yeah. I think it's for the whole family. Yes, I think it it's for everyone. And you'd be surprised you're sitting there. You see us, we came out, we really enjoyed this. Yes. And we spent time afterwards. You know, that's God's um, divine intervention for us because we all were able to come together with all the cast afterwards. Yes. 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 And um, my son enjoyed it so much. He laughed and laughed. And uh, I love you guys. Oh, I, we it, love you such, too. Thank it's you. It's such a beautiful play. We thank you, Lord, for this beautiful opportunity. At the Bronx's City Island Avenue, a gathering is taking place at Seafood City as the 11th Annual Advocacy Family Fun Day brings together families, vendors, and community leaders to support parents of special needs children. The event, organized by Kendra Hardy, a dedicated mother and advocate, encourages families to advocate for themselves and their children, ensuring access to vital services and resources. Hardy, the mother of an 18-year-old son with autism, epilepsy, and Lennox-Gastaut syndrome, emphasizes the importance of having a reliable team on hand to navigate proper approaches to special needs support, which in her case often extends to the courtroom, advocating for initiatives that would provide said essential services and resources for a functional life. So you have to set up a team for these kids. And uh, I think that's the most important part is having a team of people around you. And that's why we brought this team of uh, vendors here today to sign up parents for every service that they need so that they can go to work or school or just play with their kids. We don't have time to play with our kids. You know, I'm always in court. I'm in court right now with the Board of Ed. A diverse range of vendors, including extended home care and care design, joined forces to support the festivities, offering valuable information to participants. Now, this event doesn't only provide resources for those with friends and family of special needs, but also gives food and fun a whole afternoon of it to those in attendance. The spacious venue is lined with arcade games, surf and turf dining delights, and a beautiful outdoor seating, providing a welcoming atmosphere for families to connect and enjoy. Pastor Larry Hearn, one of the passionate advocates for this event and for special needs support, led an opening prayer and says bridging the gap between misconceptions and reality is crucial. There are people with positive motives actually trying to um, educate our communities and serve them in a way where they can um, go back and return that to someone else as well. As principal of the Mount Pleasant Cottage School, Hearn understands the significance of inclusivity and providing essentials for families navigating how to better help their loved ones, which those who help make this day happen hope to see keep going and over time have even more people involved with their cause. If you ever want to be educated, if you ever want to know more, you got to come and walk through this particular door. This particular door will allow you to shine. 
and also get you in the right frame of mind to look out for the rest of all mankind because that's what makes us all divine. Reporting from BronxNet, I'm Chris Kimella. Hey, you're Shirley Kendra here. Mm -hmm. I done changed my set. I hope y'all got that question right. Don't forget, if you want to win tickets for Bruised But Not Broken or Broadway Play, Lisa Evans, everybody, uh, you got to hit me up on my crossover showcase at gmail.com. One word, crossover showcase at gmail.com. Just tell me the name of the play and where it's located <coughs> and you're in the building. You're hanging out as my guest alongside Lisa Evans, everybody. But right now... I want to do this. You saw that. You saw my video clip for City Island. You know, we do this event every year. And it's so important that we take care of the community of people that look different from us, that are not, you know, the same as us. And we bring celebrities. We bring, we had DJ Hollywood. We had Pastor Larry Hearn. He's from Meet My Pastor and uh, Bishop and Pastor. We had uh, BronxNet come out and cover it, Nathan Mime. Uh, we had Lisa, uh, we had uh, Coach TDS. And Leia Sands, I'll do artwork with our kids. Celebrity artists come out and put their name on this. So this this is legit. It's DJ CJ, Coast TDS, um, CJ's mom. I love to say DJ CJ's mom. And just so many more celebrities that, uh, that partner up with us. But right now I'm talking all about Community Options, Inc., everybody. So if you don't, you better, you better get a piece of paper, get a pen, get a paper and a pen right now. Uh, so I want to do this. I want to introduce my guest, Celia Proko, and I want to introduce Christopher Bonadonna. How you doing? Good, Kendra. Thank you for having us. All right. So it's such a blessing to have you in the building. That's number one. And um, so what do you do to, for the organization? Um, so I oversee the employment services programs for community options in New York City. And Celia? I'm a job developer, so I go out doing job placements and help connecting the individuals with the employers and internships. So you guys know that you are life changers, right? By doing that, right? Because everybody deserves that equal opportunity to work and to live in a community, correct? You know this, right? Yeah. So I'm just letting you know, if you did not know, I'm just gonna clap for you. <laughs> you guys thank are life changers, okay? And thank you so much. I pay homage for what you're doing in our community for our individuals, okay? Okay. All right, so um, Christopher, tell me a little bit about the organization, and uh, you were founded, and exactly, give me a, just give me a breakdown of your organization. Sure, um, so we're a national agency, um, we started in 1989, we came to New York City in 1995, um, and we serviced the different boroughs here in New York City, um, we have offices in Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Queens. Um, our program specifically is for employment services and helping people with disabilities and finding employment and gaining employment skills. Um, but our agency also offers a few other uh, uh, programs. We have housing and residential, um, employment support, like I mentioned, um, services for folks with traumatic brain injury, as well as community-based day programs, um, amongst others. So if you are interested in any of those programs, feel free to look us up on our website, Community Options, um, and you can get in touch with the different programs that we have. Um, just a bit more about the employment services programs that me and Celia work within. Um, so we, uh, we work with OPWDD and Access VR. Um, that's where we get our, uh, our clients from um, that we help. So the OPWDD services that we offer are supported employment and ETP, community-based Prevoke and Pathway to Employment. And then Access VR services, we offer a slew of them. Um, they, for youth, uh, high school aged youth and adults. Um, and we do counseling services, work skill assessments, job seeking and job placement services. You're amazing, you got the, <laughs> you know, you have this down pack, I'm just letting you know. I mean, they're, they're on top of their game today. And you know, I always think about, I know all the organizations and I really would love to work with this organization so that we can make sure this continues to get out to the public so that we can continue to get people serviced in our community. And you know, the name always changes. I always say before it was consumers. And so right now, the name for instead of consumers, people are saying now? Um, differently able or? 
people that we yeah, serve. people that we support, people that, people we, support that we service, and people that we service. So, can't they just be people? Can't we just you know we're all the same, right? And I think you know we just got to get to that. I, I want to say that sweet spot that everybody's equal, and I that's what we have to find. It's not about what I'm hoping that we can get there. It's gonna it take some time because we're, people are still trying to regulate their minds to dealing with folks that are not just like them. So we're still, and that's in every kind of thing. So this is not like something unique. And I just wanna say thank you so much for all the things that you do. And we're gonna keep pushing. One more time, give me the website. Um, so you can find us on Community Options. Just Google Community Options or Community Options New York and you'll find our website. Okay, and also do you have a phone number? Um, okay, we can get, we can get that. So on my, the next show, when I come back up, we'll put a particular number that you guys can personally be reached so that you can outreach, do the outreaches? Yeah. Okay, so. So um, um, just to touch on that, you can find our uh, phone numbers for the, uh, the New York City offices on our website, as well as the national headquarters, which is in New Jersey. Um, the phone number for me uh, is 332-201-1568. So if you have questions about the programs for employment services, feel free to call that number. If you're uh, looking into other services, you can find the, the number for the best office for you to reach out to on our website. Okay, and so how do, how do, you, um, how do people qualify for, uh, to get your services? What do they have to do to qualify? Sure, um, so anybody, uh, if you have a disability, you qualify um, and you can apply for our services through OPWDD or through Access VR for the employment uh, services. Um, if you apply through OPWDD, um, yeah, um, it's okay. You okay. know, sorry about th that. Uh, that's uh, okay. I just wanted to, I, I wanted to push past that part and just say, what type of people have you serviced in the past? Because we have spoken about autism. Like, do you have a huge amount of clients that have autism? Yeah, yeah. we service people with developmental disabilities, mental health, autism. Um, we have one one person that we serve who is blind. We work with the Commission of the Blind as well. Wow, that's so amazing. Like, that's super, super amazing. So I really look forward. So everybody, I want you to take notice. Uh, the overview, the most important part of this thing is we want to make sure that you know out there if you, are, if you are an employer and you have jobs, we want you to really think hard. I, I always thought that for, um, for our individuals that shredding paper is one of the good jobs that people can do. Can you give me some other good jobs? Because if you are hiring, I wanted you to think about like what positions that our consumers do well. Um, we could do Porter. A lot of um, individuals have stock positions out of their work goal or um, retail, sales associate, um, it's cleaner. Not, it's really not limited. Um, yeah. whatever, whatever their work goal is, we help them with working towards um, and it could really be anything that has to do with their interests or their previous experiences so yeah. any type of job and this could be for somebody who's right out of high school looking for something that's entry level somebody that has a, a you know a degree um, who's looking for something that's a little more mid-level we would help just facilitate opportunities either way i love this and i just before we segue into our next segment I just wanted to um, one more time just give out the information and d uh, you service um, mental health um, as well. If you have mental health issues, that does not exclude you, correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. So I, I really want you all to think about this. So please, if you know someone, if you have a loved one that has, um, that, that may not be like me or Celia or Chris, and we think differently, we do things differently, we, you know, it's not the same. So I want you all to think about that. And, you know, there's an organization just for you so that you can have a better quality of life. And that means uh, Community Options, Inc., you're my to-go people from now on. So you might open this program and just hear Community Options like a bunch of times. So I have the information. Um, you're going to leave that with me, and then we're going to share this, okay? And then when we come along... OPWDD is a great program to work with because there are different programs that they do different things and you work with OPWDD as well. And so 
what what are, what are working with all these organizations like? What what does it feel like when you get someone a job? That feels amazing. That you can help someone become more independent and just better their life, and it it feels great. It feels great. So, I know for sure you you help a person that was blind get a job, right? Yes. And I what did. did that feel like? It felt good that. You know, they felt like they have a purpose to wake up and, you know, go to work and feel more independent. Well, can I just clap for you? <laughs> you, boss, you, boss, you want to give her a clap? <laughs> yes. And, um, and, and you're really good at this. And I just want to say thank you so much. And, and, and this is not easy. Our, our population, you know, sometimes they may get upset. But at the end of the day, sometimes they're happy. And sometimes they work better than we work, you know. And so there's certain jobs, that's why I believe that there's no way, you know, if I'm shredding documents, I don't want, I would like somebody who's not really paying no attention to my documents to shred my documents because they're not thinking about, like, I might be like, what's, your, what's that social security? <laughs> you don't know what things going on the way that things go on these days. You know, there's certain, you know, my son goes to Grocery Academy, so, you know, he's working in the office. He's working at Burlington sometimes. He's working summer youth. You know, he's autistic, and they put in him to work. And I think that, you know, we got we to gotta give kudos to organizations like this one, Community Options, Inc. So one more time, give out the information so that people can understand that everyone should have a job. Everyone should be able to work. If they want to work, they should be able to work. Mm -hmm. And uh, once again, I want to thank you very much for what you do. And for those of you, if you need some positions filled, I see hire signs up all the time. This is a great organization. And um, Chris, you may want to say a few more words about what yeah. you do and how, how you do it. And may, talk to the employer right now that has a job. Uh, so sure. Good. So um, if, uh, if you're hiring, you know, it's an untapped population. There's a lot of people out there that are looking for work who would do a really good job. Um, and they have extra support. Uh, we'll help with them, making sure that it's a good fit for them, making sure that they're learning their job tasks adequately and they're doing performing well on the job um, for anybody out there with disabilities you may be eligible for our services if you're looking for work so you can apply through for OPWDD um, for those employment services or through Access VR on the Access VR website um, if you're looking for more information about our agency community options you can find us on community options on our website um, well, I, I just want to say thank you all for coming up, and um, I'm going to get you guys some tickets. We're going to go see Bruised But Not Broken, okay? okay. All right, thank you guys want to come out thank with me? You. Yeah, of yeah, course. I'd okay. love to. All right, so we're going to make it a date. All right, I want to thank you, and um, that's really the give back for saying thank you for what you do in the community. You change lives every day, and you're, you, everyone in your office, um, thank you so much for what you all do. I'll say it like this. Thank you, Community Options. To everyone at Community Options Inc. and thank you for what you do and thank you for giving back to people that need our help the most. You know, so we have the most vulnerable population, and if we don't, you know, if you have a job and don't give them a job, like, like something's wrong. We have to move this along in a positive, uh, positive way. So I just want to say thank you to Chris and to Celia for what you do, and just keep doing what you're doing. And uh, if give out that email address one more time or wherever, any information you want to give so they can make contact. If you're hiring, these are your people right now. Give them a reach out right now. You can Google our company. Um, just look up Community Options and you'll find our website. Um, and thank you, Kendra, for having us on. Mm, thank welcome. you. It was a pleasure. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. thank you guys so much for joining me. We're going to go to a clip and we'll be right back with Meet My Bishop and My Pastor. I can't believe we're doing it. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I'm the chef. I'm the singing chef, so I'll be in the kitchen, you know. Cooking up a storm, I cook you for you. So good. You gotta love what you do. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. We are so live all over the world. We just took a little short break, but we're right back. And uh, I'm joined today. You know, we've been talking about this. We've been doing this. Meet my bishop and pastor. And I have on, <laughs> you see him online, look Skype. 
Skype at StreamYard, and it's me, my bishop and pastor. Welcome, Pastor Larry Hearn from God's House of Worship today, and he's going to bring us in with prayer. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to dialogue. We thank you, Lord, for Sister Kendra and Crossover TV. We ask, oh God, that you will continue to uh, make a way in a dry and thirsty land, God, that you will continue to help us impact and enhance uh, what it is that you have placed in our spirit for this particular program. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Amen. Uh, thank you so much. We've had like a full show today, but now we finally, we got to like, I really wanted this to happen and we went back and forth and we made it happen today. So I'm just clapping for us, Pastor, that we made it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Technology, but by the grace of God, the studio lights went flashing and flashing. And uh, we just want to say hi to the entire world that's tuning in all over the world, www.bronxnet.org. Always tell a friend to tell another friend. And by the grace of God, we're here. Uh, had some complications, but we're in the building today. And uh, Pastor Larry, can you do me a favor? Can you let everybody know uh, where you hail from and uh, how they can come to service? Yeah, so we're located um, at 536 East 172nd Street, Bronx, New York, and it's right between uh, Fortune Street and 3rd Avenue. Thank you so much. And uh, everybody has a huge program that's that's happening. And, you know, I, I just want to thank uh, Bishop Burkett couldn't make it uh, on on this episode right now. We were waiting for him. But we um, God knows exactly what he's doing. He gave me at least one of my pastors and um this 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 show is going to be amazing. Uh, he always blesses us with his presence and uh, always gives us a good word. But today we're here to talk about uh, an event that he has coming up and it's called Church Hurt. So tell us a little bit about that. How did that come about? What does that mean, Pastor Larry? Yeah, thanks, Sister Kendra. Uh, so Church Hurt is basically um, any type of trauma, right? Any type of pain that has been stemmed for whether it's um, uh, trauma from spiritual abuse, whether it's um, <clears throat> just uh, receiving a negative experience or, or, or seeing things from a, from a negative lens um, as it relates to church and the church setting. Thank you. And so how did this come about? Yeah, so we, um, so this is something that God put in my heart um, and, and kind of deposited into my spirit that I've been reflecting on for actually a couple of years now, right? Um, and I, I, I got kind of showed it to me uh, through the piece of evangelism, right? A lot of times when we think about evangelism, we think about people out on the street or in the community that might not look like the church, right? That's who, we, that's who we're going after. Or maybe we, we've set our mindset on going after uh, those who uh, we don't necessarily see in the church on Sunday morning. Well, there's a whole different group of people, right, who are familiar with church, who are spiritual, right, who probably know the Bible more than you and I, uh, but because of a negative experience, they have strayed away uh, from the church setting, right? So that's who we were set out to evangelize on that particular day. And um, <clears throat> the way the Holy Spirit gave it to me is that um, he gave it to me in three different audiences, right? So we're targeting three different audiences uh, that have had some what of a negative experience as it relates to church. Um, so the first audience are those who have, uh, you know, maybe been victims of spiritual abuse, who probably still dwell in the church, but because of their trauma, it doesn't allow them to grow or go further in God. Um, and on the flip side of that, it creates like this distrust in them from their leaders. Uh, the second audience that we're targeting are those who, um, they still have a relationship with God. They're still spiritual, but they've let they've left the church setting, um, and because of their trauma, they're scared to congregate, right? Uh, because they value who they are so much, and uh, what, you know. So when it comes to loyalty, integrity, um, or even just honesty and, and and some level of transparency, they are afraid to compromise it again because of their negative experiences. And then the third audience that we're targeting are those who you know, grew up in the church, who had a relationship with God, but because of their pain, they even left Christianity as a religion as a whole. Mm. Uh, so those are the three audiences that we're targeting, and we think that God is going to do great things. Amazing. So tell me who's coming out, uh, who have you invited out, who are your guest speakers, uh, who's, partic who's partaking? It's a surprise, Mr. Kendra. You got to be there. <laughs> I will be. <laughs> I, you know, I was just telling Angel, I will be present. You know, we've been a little all over the world right now doing, I feel like doing 10 million things, 
but I will uh -huh. be present for this one. And uh, I want to tell you that I'm so proud of you for just taking this on because 1.1, 1 .1, the, the targeted audience, that's why you all do crossover TV. You could, you could simply do a Christian program, but you take on my program and my audience, and you know that we, it's different backgrounds. And I appreciate, and I also love you all for that, for doing that for me, you, yourself, and Bishop Burkett. Um, I really, truly appreciate you for caring so much for doing that for me because you know my passion. You know, I'm really passionate about this. You know, the newly saved, the saved, and mm -hmm. the people that are so saved, they, you know, they, that tar those targeted, th you, you, you nailed it. You know, you didn't tell me this was like, you, like that other surprise you just said, oh, it's going to be a surprise. And, you know, my thing is these three targeted, I just need you to go one step by step now. So go back to one. Let's talk about one. Right, right. Um, so the first audience, the retargeting of those who um, have experienced, um, you know, uh, negative influences or negative experiences in the church, but they still congregate, right? So these are, these are the people... Um, if you will, who um, are probably one of the most dangerous. Um, and the reason why I say that is because hurt people hurt people, mm -hmm. right? And so um, when you are still in the church um, and you've been broken and you've been hurt, um, it has a tendency to become contagious, right? But on the flip side of that, from a leadership perspective, uh, when I see a sheep like this, when I see a disciple like this, um, you know, some of the characteristics that we see are people who refuse to grow, not because they're rebellious, but because they're cautious. OK, and we have to be very careful how to distinguish the two. Um, a lot of times we ask, you know, people in the church to do something or would you like to do this or would you? And they say, no, I'm OK. Right. And everything you ask them, you know, it's like a shutdown. It's like, no, or, 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 you know, maybe they leave church uh, before everybody else. Maybe they don't stick around the fellowship, right? And sometimes if we're not careful, we can see that as someone who uh, doesn't have a spirit of unity or someone who, who, you know, who is rebelling against the church's vision or, or the church's goal as it relates to, you know, everybody being on the court. But um, sometimes, sometimes that person is being cautious, right? They've had negative experiences with people in the church. So so they'll show up and they'll trust God to give them the instruction for the week. They'll show up for the worship. They'll show up for the word, right? But when it comes to uh, the, the fellowship or the, or the responsibilities of the church, they would rather not because they've been broken every time they've uh, tried to step out and do something. Wow. The second, um, the, the second um, audience that we're targeting are those who have a relationship with God um, but they are afraid to congregate. These are people who I would have to say are probably some of the most anointed people that you've ever met. And the reason why I say that is because the Bible says, and, and you know, as pastors, we like to throw this scripture around. And although it's true, a lot of times we have the tendency to take it out of context, right? Um, to forsake not yourself the assembly of the saints. Well, that, what that means is, you know, um, you know, be around be around the brothers, you know, be around the Bible says iron sharpen the iron. Be around your brothers, be around your sisters. Uh, but these are people who I just want to take the moment right now and just to take my hat off and congratulate. Because for the simple fact for you to be able to not attend church, but still be disciplined with your relationship says a lot about your morals and your values, because everybody can't do that. Um, but what I will say, these are people who once again are some of your most talented, some of your most anointed, but they um, refuse to compromise what God is doing in their life or what God has already done, right? And once again, it comes from a negative experience. Um, a lot of times you see Christians like this and they've transitioned out of the church because uh, one, it was either due to jealousy or envy um, or, or, or for the simple fact they made a mistake, right? Uh, they made a mistake and they feel a little ashamed or, or there's some sense of guilt or remorse there. And so they feel like, well, maybe it's just better if I'm by myself, right? God uh, brought me into this world. God is the one who's going to take me out. Um, I'm only accountable to him. And, and the second, um, the third audience is obviously those who have left Christianity, um, you know, or who refuse to stand up for it um, because they've been hurt or they've been broken. 
and I was ministering to this young lady, or I attempted to minister to her one day, um, and, you know, I asked her if she was a Christian, and, you know, she, her response was, um, if I tell you I'm a Christian, how do I know that you won't kill me right now? Wow. Right? Um, and so even though that might not necessarily stem from the church, right? But how are we empowering those who we're overseeing, right? A lot of people have left to different religions because they feel a sense of brotherhood, because they feel a sense of unity. Some have transitioned and left to other religions because the religions are more, a little bit more lenient, right? But regardless of the fact, there was something from different religions that called their attention, that engaged them, right? That draw them in and say, hey, I can provide something or we can provide something that you're not receiving in Christianity, right? Um, you know, we might not uh, be on, we, we might not have on our Sunday's best, right? We might not have a worship um, um, song for every emotion that you're experiencing at this moment. But what I can uh, tell you is that you're going to have a group of brothers and sisters who um, will buy you groceries if you need food. You have brothers and sisters that if you make a mistake and you fail, we're not going to talk about you, but we're going to pick you back up. Amen. Um, you know, and I've even seen it, um, you know, in the prison setting, right? Uh, you know, when brothers, they grow up in church, uh, but when they end up transitioning to an institution uh, because of protection and provision, right, they join, um, you know, other religions, and I'm not going to put it out there. But but these are the factors, right? And this is what we see. So a lot of times these are these are some of the reasons why um, you have people transition out of Christianity and target another religion because of the previous hurt and what they've experienced uh, from um, a church. Nelson Mandela said this. Um, he said, it's not God who I disagree with. He says, it's church people who I disagree with, right? right? And, uh, you know, that, that, um, that statement is so powerful, right? Because here it is. This is a man of influence. This is a man of, um, you know, power, right? Imagine if you could impact one person who has so much influence with another nation or another religion, right? So um, what I take from that is that a lot of times it's not the God um, that disappoints, right? Sometimes it's the people who are reflecting God in them um, who disappoints. And, you know, but I'm not going to give you everything. I feel like you, you're taking yeah, everything I'm, out I'm, of me. I'm just going to give you the appetizer. Listen, I'm trying my best. I'm, that's why I'm very <laughs> quiet. But when you all see me quiet, I'm trying to get the, I'm trying to get the info out. And then that's what we're doing today. I just want to say to you, uh, Pastor Larry, thank you so much. And mental health and, and, and church and religion, it's, it's really important to discuss. I was at a, I'll tell you this, I was at a Burger King the other day with Isaiah. He makes me take him there. So, and a young lady said, I want my burger. I want a burger with lettuce, tomato, ketchup, and I don't, it's $5.44. I don't want french fries, and I got my food stamp card. And I'll jump behind the counter and get it. She was a young lady. I bought her food. I said, please get her her burger and her french fries with her ketchup, her lettuce, and tomato. And she prayed for Isaiah afterwards. And, you know, I, I, I think we have to talk about mental health and religion and understanding how mm -hmm. we as a congregation can, can help. So can I'm you, can you, you answer I'm that? Glad you, I'm glad you said that because, um, you know, just to give you a little information on the, the panelists, right? So we have uh, bishops on the panelists. We have pastors. We have regular laymen. On the um, on the on the on the panel who have had negative experiences, right? Some of uh, some of them have even tiptoed into into other religions, right? Um, so they know the difference, right? They can speak to it. There's a level of transparency. We have people who have uh, previous experience with doing podcasts uh, with church hurt and church pain. We also have um, we also have Christian psychologists, right? Who's going to be present um, just in case someone there, right, gets what they need but they don't know what the next steps are, right? So we're going to um, have Christian psychologists there who can also lend, an hand, lend a hand and, and kind of take that mental health portion of it and uh, combine it with their spirituality. I and, love and, it. And I'm saluting you. I am saluting you. It's well overdue, long overdue. I want to thank you so much for doing this. Let's tell people one more time uh, where they should come out. I know that it's going down on October the 19th. I will mm -hmm. be present. 
and uh, I will come back with more information for the yes. public as soon as we get more information or what I'm allowed to give. And then um, we are low. You guys are located at 536 East 172nd Street. And uh, it's God's house of worship. Anything else you want to add before you leave us in prayer? Uh, no, I just want to encourage everybody to, uh, you know, get there on time. Invite a friend, right? Um, invite a neighbor. Maybe it's someone who, uh, you know, might be in a, in a different religion. Everybody can gain and learn something from this panel. Um, it, you know, we're not turning any rock unturned. And let me just say this, Kendra, is that we're diving into the deep with this one, right? Uh, uh, on Saturday, October 19th, we're not going to be afraid of controversy, right? Because that's what's going to bring the healing. Right. We understand mm -hmm. there's, there might be some disagreements in the audience. Right. Some of the comments or the statements that are coming in uh, via live stream. Right. There might be some disagreements, but this is how we're going to get the church to healing. Right. This is how we're going to provide some healing because everybody's coming in with different perspectives. Everybody is coming in with different opinions. Right. But when we get together, we when, when we when we open up the Bible, when we separate culture, when we separate um you know, mentalities that, that, that have been taught with, you know, uh, you know, this mediocre mindset or this religious mindset. When we separate tradition, when we separate, um, you know, um, dogma, right? When we separate all of that and we get to the word of God and we provide a solution for people who have been struggling and experiencing something for generations, then the church will be able to move forward. But we can't go out and reach the lost if we haven't even reached our own. Thank you so much, Pastor Larry. I will be there. I'll be present. I'll bring friends. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on October the 19th. And uh, we'll get a date and time. and all. We, we have the date. We'll get all the time and how people can um, either they're going to, you know, try to show up. Just show up. I want somebody to lay their hands on me. Uh-uh, I'm, sh I'm showing up, okay? <laughs> Don't talk about no, no live streams. I'm showing up, okay? Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, yeah. I love you. Can you close us out in prayer? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. We thank you, Lord, for this event. We thank you for Bishop Burkett's event. We thank you, Lord, for just blessing the kingdom in general. We ask, oh God, that you continue to lift up men and women and young people who are not afraid of controversy, but who are willing to speak the truth and go out and spread the gospel to a dying nation. Because we understand that in 2024, um, the, the, the gospel is evolving and the world is evolving. And we ask, Lord God, that you will continue to evolve us as a people, not straying away from your word, but looking at different forms of communication and facets to communicate your word and to communicate your will. And we thank you for it and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So Bishop Burkett's event is going down, everybody. Just to let you know, thank you for prayer. Just to let everybody know what's going on, you can um, go to Bishop Dr. Timothy Burkett's event. It's Saturday, October 26th. We got a lot of places to show up, okay, everybody? And that's 201 Findlay Avenue. You can also call uh, just to schedule your place to let people know you're going to be there. It's the 37th church anniversary. 37th church anniversary. And the phone number is 347-271-7552. That number, once again, is 347-271-7552. You can call the church on Tuesdays and Thursday and ask about the 37th church anniversary for Bishop Dr. Timothy Burkett. Meet my bishop for Meet My Bishop and Pastor. Lock your dolls, Kendra. We'll see you next week. Crossover TV.